Hey you guys, welcome back to the channel. I know I just did a video for Adobe Fresco, but I did that drawing yesterday. So this is basically today's drawing for Inktober. You guys know that I've been doing Harry Potter now for a little while. Um, today I'm going to go into the realm of the owls. Of course you guys know that Harry Potter and that whole world <clears throat> uses owls to transport uh, mail, so the whole owl post. Recently, I had a project that involved these creatures, and I had the opportunity to draw a ton of owls, which is really cool. Um, I really love doing wildlife. It's kind of my thing. Whenever I was in college, that's what I really love to do, that and characters. So, I really love doing uh, owls in general, and especially character owls. I don't know, for some reason it really speaks to me whenever I can do something like that. That being said, um, this morning I'm going to be doing a kind of a, I guess a horned owl um, for you guys. More traditional than I typically will show on this channel. Sometimes, occasionally, I will do some traditional um, artwork, you know, maybe an occasional wildlife sketch or an animal or some elephants. I'm really, I really love elephants. I don't know if that's another thing with me. I love elephants. Um, but today we're going to be really focusing in and doing a graphite uh, drawing and I'll throw some pen and ink in there whenever I'm finished for uh, this particular owl. Um, <clears throat> Harry of course has a uh, you know, the fluffy, whatever you call that thing, the fluffy owl, the fluffy white owl. Um, I know that's not the scientific name for it, <laughs> but, uh, you know, Hedwig. And then, of course, you have the other owls from Pigwidgeon all the way uh, across the board. Um, Draco Malfoy's uh, owl, which is an eagle owl. <clears throat> and, you know, this particular owl you know, could have been one of the other owls uh, in the rung. So that's basically what I'm doing today. Right now I'm, I'm blocking in my basic shapes and my composition, right? I want him to be on a branch. You know, he's going to have his feathers that are going to come down here off the page, so we're not going to show those. And he's got this other branch that comes up, maybe comes around, right? Kind of goes in and then it goes out like that. I encourage you guys to really experiment with the types of medium you know that you use to draw with, to paint with, to really kind of not treat it as your own. This is, you know, this is the way that I'm going to work for the rest of my life because just like anything it gets stagnant and stale and a lot of times having a different perspective especially whenever it comes to art will really help you out. Another thing that I think we need to realize as artists and creators is the need to get out, right? We need to get out to really help fill and, and help, um, not so much fill, but help maintain that visual library, that bank account, you know, that, that we're continually modifying and uh, adjusting in our lives to really draw from and draw I put in the parentheses you know air quotes because of course I'm drawing <clears throat> but that being said what you you know always need to remember is you're constantly evolving your style you're constantly evolving who you are as an artist you're constantly changing things about yourself and about your style right I watched a documentary recently on Vincent Van Gogh and you know how he had honestly in his early career some of his drawings weren't very good and of course this is me being an illustrator looking at stuff of a master you know he wasn't really considered to be a master um, you know he was trying to make a living as an artist and he was painting all the time but what he recognized was he was he was trying to paint that human dynamic you know at the time people in general especially artists <clears throat> they weren't really painting the human condition right so he lived in a place um, you know in a coal mining town early on in his career 
and he was trying to paint the human condition, you know, the human condition being the coal miners and how hard it was to be a coal miner. And of course, you know, at that time, the, you know, being near the Industrial Revolution and, and, and just trying to go into the coal mines and, and, you know, you would have children that would go into coal mines. And he, some of his early drawings, although good, I'm not going to belittle, you know, a master, they, they weren't indicative of his later, later work that was just absolutely phenomenal, <clears throat> you know, in terms of color, presence, his, his uh, dedication to uh, modification of his own style. And what inadvertently happened was he ended up moving to Paris and, you know, having a little bit of a change of uh, scenery and environment. And what that did is, is it gave him a complete different perspective on life and color and just some of the stuff that he did later on in his career. You know, they say he was, he was painting five to seven uh, paintings a day because he was, it, it was like he knew his time was limited, which, you know, who knows? It may have been limited um, in terms of his sanity. What I, what I tend to think uh, happened because there's been many conjecture revolving around that particular artist. Um, you know, I tend to think that, uh, you know, there's a possibility that there were chemicals involved uh, in his demise, you know, during that time. And I'm sure that there's been other people in the world that have surmised this. During that time, there were a lot of different chemicals in the world uh, involved in painting and, and how, you know, the, uh, you know, the whole, you know, titanium paint, cobalt paint, he could have possibly been poisoned um, or poisoning himself for the amount of paint that he was doing. There was lead in the paint, there was mercury in the paint, you know, he ended up, you know, having some, uh, a stint over in, uh, you know, in a, in a sanatorium, in an asylum, and, that, in and of itself, I think, really, I think, opened his eyes a little bit to the fact that maybe he had some mental uh, issues. And then whenever you put in the, all those chemicals, it really compresses that issue in general. So it is unfortunate that we lost him. <clears throat> Obviously, you know, you don't ever want to lose great artists. But the, uh, the work that he did was, you know, very instrumental. And, and if, like I said, if you look at some of his uh, early work, you see that he, he was struggling with the way he saw the world. And, of course, after he went to Paris, then that's when he really started imbuing that beautiful color palette that really defines him and his, his complete body of work as being a master. And I just love Van Gogh's work. Every time I see it, especially the later, you know, the later stuff. It just, it really blows me away that, um, you know, he was able to uh, do that, especially in his mental condition. Um, and who knows? You know, I, I watched a movie that indicates that possibly he might have been uh, murdered, which, you know, I don't, I don't know if there's any truth to that statement, but it, it is what I like to call, uh, you know, Hollywood sensationalism and, and an interesting theory, but the reality is either way you look at it, it was a tragedy. Um, you know, you never want anybody uh, to die too early, and, and in my opinion, he died way too early. He still had so much left in him, um, and uh, I suppose that's why it's kind of that romance. <clears throat> we look at it as being you know, kind of romantic, you know, he was an artist, he struggled for his, his art, which he did, and it's just sad, you know. Anyway, so owls, um, what makes them cool? Oh, gosh, I don't know. I've had an affini affinity with owls forever, as long as I can remember, and I just love the way they're constructed, you know. I recently went to a, it wasn't a symposium, it was a Kind of a, I'm trying to draw this. Give me a second here. Draw his wings. It was um, an outdoor uh, gathering, but it wasn't outdoors, it was indoors. It was for outdoor uh, apparel and goods. And there they had a Chinese, um, just a beautiful Chinese owl. I don't remember the name of it. 
but I was astonished at the size of the owl. I, it was massive. It had orange eyes. It was so beautiful. And I looked at that creature, and I just, I, I was astonished at the, the beauty, um, you know, that that creature was. Um, and, you know, it reconfirmed, you know, the fact that I love drawing animals in general. <clears throat> What's great about drawing animals in general, and if you haven't, if those of you who watch my channel have not drawn animals, I highly recommend that you do that because it really gives you a different perspective of how things are created and how things are the same, right? We look at uh, birds and, and, and lizards and, and just creatures uh, of the world and we think there's such a difference um, in us, which there is, but on the other hand, there's such uh, a similarity. I mean, we have eyes, we have legs, we have feet, we have, um, you know, mouths and intestines and, and uh, you know, backbones and bones in general. And, and a lot of times what I tell people whenever they're having difficulty painting or drawing animals in general is I say basically you need to relate yourself to what you're looking at right you relate yourself now obviously I can't relate myself to the stick because I'm not a stick <laughs> right uh, I'm announced to some of my students who think I'm a bump on a log you know as they try to pass off work that they say they've worked six, seven, eight hours on, and I can look at it and basically tell that they've spent five minutes on it right before class. That upsets me. Anyway, you can tell that I'm a little upset. I recently reviewed a project a week in, and it's a very complex project, and, and they have, gosh, they have not done what they're supposed to. And then I had one student that blew my socks off, and I'm like, oh my gosh. You know, and this student had prior to that class not really um, done a lot uh, but man he just he just knocked it out of the park and I looked at him and I'm like good job buddy you know anyway what I'm trying to basically say is I don't have any relationship to a stick per se so it, it's hard for me to look at a stick so I draw it in terms of what I know about it right it's rigidity it's organic material but it's solid organic material it has a potential to bend so it's going to be affected by gravity um, and, uh, but whenever it comes to, you know, creatures and owls and, and cats and dogs and, you know, bears, oh my, they have, you have a relationship with them because you basically have eyes. You basically have, um, you know, a heart, or at least some of you do. Um, some of us in the world do. Then, you know, we also look at it you know, you might not have feathers, but you have hair. So feathers modified hairs, right, that come out. And, you know, the more that we look at animals, the more that we realize that we have a lot more in common than we think, you know. So basically what I'm doing right now is I'm just, I'm literally just fleshing in some of the items here. Since I can't draw some of the items off the page, um... So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to have. Because <clears throat> if you look over on the right-hand side, I like all this, how it curves around, but what's happening here is there's a big open space. So I've got this that comes up like this. I like this, and then it comes like this. It kind of points right up to his face. This comes around, and it frames him. Not in the center. He's up and to the right. So this is going to be where your main subject is. So I'm going to put a little bit of contrast in his ear to help direct your eye a little bit. See that puts you right there. So then I'm going to come around and I'm going to just start putting in some details. Now I'm drawing today not like your traditional you know pencil graphite piece. I've got it turned over on its side <clears throat> to give me a little bit more stroke and a little bit more um, just fluidity. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this come down like this, split off, and then I'm going to have this come up. Okay? And even that's not working for me very well. So I'm going to have this come up like this. And I'm going to color it in. 
Okay, so now I need to have his other foot right here. So basically what I like to do is even though there's a lot of details in that foot, right? It's got so many bones and it's just, uh, you, you think about drawing it and you get overwhelmed, or at least I do. So what I like to do is I just, I put a circle, right? That's where his foot's gonna be. Here's where the other foot's gonna be, right? I've already partially drawn that in, right? So I'm gonna have the feathers come around. That's gonna come out just a little bit. I have this come out because these are feathers. I've established where his face is. I'm starting to lose my point on my pencil. So I'm gonna have to sharpen it here in a second. Now if you look, even though this is a completely woodless pencil, it, it's all graphite. I, I forget what B it is. It's probably like a 2B. 2B or not 2B. Um, or a 4B. I typically like to draw at a 4B or a 6B because whatever I'm drawing, I don't want the graphite to come off too much onto my hand and smear everything. Now you can wear a glove or you can have, you know, you know, maybe you have this and you're drawing like this, or you have a lot of painters use these bars that come across and they'll paint using that, which is completely fine. It just depends on your preference. But since this is just a, a rough sketch, I'm not gonna worry too much about smearing. Okay, got that eye right there. I got that coming out. So I'm thinking about doing um, some traditional uh, mixed media pieces. Possibly paint, possibly oil, possibly acrylic. I'm traditionally a, an acrylic painter. I used to paint in oil, but um, what basically happened is the linseed oil, I got allergic to it, so I sneeze uncontrollably if I get too close to linseed oil. Um, I do love oil paint, um, and, I, and I have used it quite a bit in the past, but acrylics tend to work a little bit better for me. For those of you who have never used acrylics before, um, acrylics dry and they have a little bit different blending properties. And you can use transparency, uh, like liquid, liquefier, to help you um, with the drying time of the acrylic. But you're basically painting with plastic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in, and I'm not going to put too much texture in these because I want, again, I want this to act as a framing element for him. So this is going to come around. I don't want this to interfere. So I'm just basically going to give it a little bit of shadowing here. I've lost my third thing here. Now since this is graphite, I can come back with an eraser so you guys remember that. Right? So I'm putting a little bit of shadowing here and there. Here, there. Okay. Cool. Now if you look, even though I've got a nice established sketch, how much time we got? Okay, that's not too bad. Even though we've got a nice established sketch, okay, what I'm gonna do now is this is has the potential to be a very complex because I can put the feathers in, I can go in, and I still haven't I still haven't blocked in my other foot, so I need to establish where that branch is. Right? And I'm gonna shade a little bit in here. Okay, and you've got that under part. See, I like to have, it's called drawing through. So I draw through here. Here's the foot, right? Here's that foot mass. I come down here and this is where the bottom of the feathers will stick out, which I will not see. So now I'm gonna come back. I wanna do, because if you look, if you look at your hand, and, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm referencing it back to myself. Now I can have a ton of reference up for birds, but I've drawn owls and I've drawn creatures enough to realize they have a lot of things in common. So I'll use myself a lot of times as reference. So if I look at my hand, this top knuckle, being the longest, is the highest in my hand. So since this particular bird has three plus one, so there's three in the front and one in the back. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a shape here, okay? Then I'm gonna come down, since it's the highest, remember this is the highest. Then I'm gonna come and draw a shape. Remember, I'm not getting into the minutia of, of the design of the claws yet. And then I'm gonna draw a shape here, 
Okay, so this comes down, his leg is going to be partially hidden by these three. Now, whenever I think of claws, there's a couple ways that I can do them. Some animals have exposed claws, like an eagle, his feathers end up here, and he's got this whole talon exposed, and there's hard lines. But with owls, it's a little bit different sometimes. Sometimes they have fur. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a little indication of fur, or feathers, Okay, that one comes out since it's holding and gripping onto that tree. This one comes down, right, and it's going to come out just a little bit because it's extended. Okay, and again, I'm going to come up. I'm going to draw a little bit of an indication of that fluff. Okay, and then I'm going to come here and I've got that other one. So, in terms of perspective, this one's kind of going to the left slightly. This one, I see this side of this form. And then this one's going to be down just a little bit, like this. And I've got that talon coming out, and it's going to be going a little bit forward because it's extended, right? Okay, and I've drawn these a little bit darker just because they're in front of the owl. And in terms of line weight, I want to have that depth of field, okay? So again, we come here, and we've got that fluff that comes out because it's in front of this, okay? Here, here, and then now I'm going to go one, two, three, and it's rounded. That part of the breast right there is rounded, and I'm just going to give little indications that follow that path up and around. I'm not going in and drawing a bunch of the feathers. I don't want to do that, okay? Just because whenever I start doing the ink here in a second, I have a feeling that I'm going to end up messing up my drawing. And I might just do simple, simple inking here and there, you know? Because, of course, Inktober, you have to do ink, right? Inktober. So we're going to color that in. To, again, give it a depth of field. I'm going to go in and I'm going to mess around with the eyes just slightly, right? to give them a render quality just slightly. I don't want to overdo it. I'm not here to overdo things. I'm not here to, you know, press. I'm not here to push. I'm here to accent, accent, accentuate, have some fun, just a little bit of fun. That's all I want to do. That's all I'm really trying to do is have a little bit of fun. Now, since I've drawn a little bit of uh, trees in my lifetime, I understand how that texture works, but I'm not, again, you know, this is, a, this is a secondary part of the drawing over here, okay? This is the primary part of the drawing. In actuality, this is the primary part of the drawing. So most of my focus is going to go right here. Now, I've drawn indications. I'm not, but I'm not going to get into the, again, I'm not getting into the, the minutia of all of these, you know, elements. That's not what this drawing is supposed to be about, right? So now that I come up here, I'm going to go in and I'm just going to start using my graphite to put in some of those nice indications really color in that eyeball give it a little bit of shading on the inside watch my ellipse inside the eye then I'm going to give it a little bit of shadowing under here if you guys have ever seen and I highly recommend you look it up it's one of those things where you really need to understand the uh, the construction of like an owl skull and how it's constructed the eyes are massive. They are so much bigger than what you think they are. Right? So I'm going to bring this out just a little bit to round it out. Okay. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to color this in slightly. And again, what's nice, whenever I turn it on its side, I get that nice broad stroke. And it's picking up the texture of the paper really nice. Right? And look how fast you can put in those feathers. And I'm, and I'm, remember, I'm thinking in terms of 3D, so I've got this roundness here, and then it comes around like that. So whenever I draw these, I draw them at an angle, 
right? Because they're here's here's the angle of the feather here, and it's going to be darker on the bottom part. And again, I don't want to go in and just render the crap out of it because it's going to be too much. So now we're going to block that in to push that that way. Okay, it's being pushed that way, and then you have that contrast which brings this a little bit forward. All right, and I darken this line. And now I'm going to go back and I'm going to color the, not color, I'm going to shade in the bottom part of this. Because again, it's rounded. So it's going to have a little bit of darkness over here. And then I'm going to shade this. Right? And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to shade all of this just slightly, just a little bit of shade. Right? Okay. I'm going to color in this talon, this talons. I watched uh, Napoleon Dynamite recently. What a ridiculous movie. Super fun. And again, this is a secondary item. I'm not going to render it. I'm not coloring it in. I can literally just put these in to fill up some of that negative space. And even if I want to go in and do something like this, it still adds to that motion, right? Right? Okay. Got that to come here. I don't even know if I want to go ahead and and do a uh, an ink pass on this. I kind of like the pencil drawing, to be honest with you. I'm being inundated by Chinese beetles, lady beetles, right now. I can hear them right above my head. Nope, that's a stink bug. So we're going to leave him alone because I think he eats the Chinese lady beetles. So, eat them! So we're going to come back. This will be the last pass, right? So there's a little bit of shadow underneath, a little bit of shadow underneath, right? You've got this fluff, I'm going to accentuate and define these areas a little bit better. Okay. This comes out. This comes here and it splits off again. Because in terms of the way these creatures are constructed, there's feathers, different feathers for different um, applications. You have flight feathers, you have quieting feathers. And one of the most fascinating things that I found out, because I watched a documentary on owls, is some of them, their feathers are designed for silence because they're hunters, right? They're, they're designed to be super quiet. So whenever they fly through the air, they don't make any noise at all, which blew my mind, of course, mind blown. We're gonna do some little minutia details back here, just a little indication, right? I'm gonna get a little bit of shadows right here just to kind of push the direction and give it a little bit of context. Okay. We're gonna have some feathers sticking out here. He's got some feathers on top of his head, but we're not gonna again we're not getting into those. I don't want to get into those. You know, if I was going to render this, I would take a pass now with my eraser and I would just push it back. And then I would come back with the graphite and I would just literally start doing all the details, right? So I'm just putting these in here and there. And I think that pretty much is going to wrap up. Let's go ahead and do this because I want this to frame him a little bit better. Here we go. All right? And then we've got a, a hillside that comes up like this. Right? And there's a moon. If I were to color it, I would have that moon right there. Right? So that pretty much wraps up the horned owl, one of the many owls that they have in the Harry Potter world, right? I know it's a stretch. I get it. I get I didn't do a character today, but I just didn't feel like doing a character, right? Sometimes you get to that point, you're just like, you know what? I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't want to do that. And ultimately, it's my choice, right? I get to choose. 
what I'm doing. And today I wanted to do an owl. I wanted to do an owl yesterday, but I just some days, man, I just don't feel like it. You know, and that's that's kind of sad. But on the other hand, that's reality. Just know that I don't feel like doing it every single day. Right? I don't want to draw every day. Even though I, I advocate for that. Sometimes it just doesn't happen. Now I did draw something yesterday, obviously, for the video that you guys saw for because uh, you know I wanted to draw digitally and I wanted to go into fresco. Um, for those of you who are interested in Adobe Fresco, uh, watch the video. It's pretty interesting. I didn't do a tutorial. I just basically me drawing and time lapse and explaining the, the things that I liked and I didn't like about the program. There's a lot that I do like, but at the end of the day, right now, I just think it needs to bake a little bit longer, meaning it needs to have some improvements before I utilize it in a professional uh, sense. I'll draw on it and have fun with the, with the watercolor engine. But overall, I just think it needs some more time. So not too bad on the graphite on my hand. Um, it didn't smear too bad, which is really nice. Again, these are Progresso or Progesso, Progresso, Progresso, woodless, all graphite pencils. Highly recommend these. Great for sketching. Great for having some fun. Great for field use, too. I highly recommend, you know, if you guys have are working inside, get out. Get outside, look at your world, bring a little beauty into it. You know, go do some painting. He has some, well, some moss or something kind of going through here. What I'll probably do is I'll probably just fart around with it for the next 10 minutes or so. Because again, I got tons of work to do today and I don't really want to. That's eh, not bad. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Okay, I think that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Like and subscribe if you like what you see. Share. Build a channel for me. Help, help me build a channel, please. I'm trying so hard to build a channel. It's not easy. You know, you always look at the people who have such success on YouTube and you're like, oh, I want that. But a lot of times you don't because you don't want to have to post every day. But I think what I really would like at the end of the day is, you know, to make sure that you guys are getting helped in some capacity. They didn't have YouTube when I was an artist um, back in the day, you know, developing my skills. Nowadays, you know, you have this incredible resource that you can watch professionals draw, you can, you know, help them out um, financially, you can not help them out financially, which is fine. I don't, you know, it's not that I, I'm trying to ask you guys for anything but the reality is is YouTube is a great resource so look around this is a great place to find out how to do something you know school's good too don't get me wrong a lot of people go to school a lot of people believe in school but if you don't have the money to go to school honestly guys just use YouTube you know do what they say listen to what the professionals say a lot of times it's do what they say and do what they do <laughs> So thank you guys, and we'll see you next time.